Well, hello. Good morning. Welcome to this uh, very wet, wet and windy day. Uh, you can't see inside, which is nice. We're nice inside in the not quite so warm front room, but at least we're not outside in the rain. It's not that windy, actually. It's not as windy as it was predicted so far, anyway. Have you been out yet today? No. It's very windy. <laughs> it's very, very windy. Um, it's just that certain people haven't been out of the house yet today. No, no, it's true. It doesn't look as windy as I was expecting it to. But you haven't had any trees blowing through the front no, of the window? No, that's what I was expecting. Oh, okay. So anything else is just minor. <laughs> Hopefully it won't get that bad. I nearly saw a bin demolish um, a little sports car down the road <laughs> when I uh, dropped the kids off. You did? Yeah. It's right. quite windy, Hannah. It's quite windy. Anyway, I hope you're keeping safe as well. Um, it's very lovely uh, for you to join us if you're joining us now. If you're watching us later, it's very lovely of you to watch us later too. Um, we're doing Psalm 21 today. I hope the title didn't put you off too much. I'm just going to read it for you, then we'll start chatting. Perfect. How the King rejoices in your strength, O Lord. He shouts with joy because you give him victory. For you have given him his heart's desire. You have withheld nothing he requested. Selah. You welcomed him back with success and prosperity. You placed a crown of finest gold on his head. He asked you to preserve his life and you granted his request. The days of his life stretch on forever. Your victory brings him great honour and you clothed him with splendour and majesty. You have endowed him with eternal blessings and given him the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. The unfailing love of the Most High will keep him from stumbling. You will capture all your enemies. Your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. You will throw them into a flaming furnace when you appear. The Lord will consume them in his anger. Fire will devour them. You will wipe their children from the face of the earth. They will never have descendants. Although they plot against you, their evil schemes will never succeed, for they will turn and run when they see your arrows aimed at them. Rise up, O Lord, in all your power. With music and singing, we celebrate your mighty acts. Um, let's just pray. Lord, we just really pray that you would um, just bless this time. Um, thank you, Lord, that you've given us just a little bit of time in the week to, to look at your word, to pray to you, and to consider what you're saying to us. Lord, thank you that you still speak to us through your word. And we just really pray, Lord, that you would speak to us now in Jesus' name. Just really pray for Betty particularly in hospital at the moment. Lord, just be with her. Be with Joyce, who's trying to take care, care of her. Be with Marjorie and be with Ida. Pray that you'd be with um, Mavis and Vernal um, uh, over in the West Indies. And just really pray that you would... Help them, guard them, and keep them safe, Lord, in Jesus' name. Just thank you, Lord, that you do love us, and you do want to just keep us safe. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, uh, this song is all about power. It's quite shocking when you read it, uh, and it starts and ends with power. But whose power is it talking about, is the question, Jonathan. Indeed. So in verse 1, how the king rejoices in your strength, O Lord. And rise up, O Lord, in all your power. The music and singing we celebrate. In our version it says mighty acts. Uh, in Hebrew version it says your might or your power. Everything about the king and his enormous military forces described in the rest of the psalm is framed by Yahweh's might and power. It is God who provides humankind with any semblance of rule or reign. It's God who arms us to fight the battles we need to engage in. And of course in the Old Testament these battles were very real. They used to fight with each other and we still see real battles. The Russians obviously amassing 100,000 plus troops on the Ukrainian border. It is pretty scary. So in verse 4 he says he's asked you to grant his request. Or coming back to a common theme that we've been looking at, Pequach Nefesh, he's asked you for life and you have granted it in the Hebrew. Where do we find life? Well, that's a question. Where do I find my place? There's also the other question, if I could please. 
So we find it in the Bible, we find it in God's words, in his instruction manual for life. There's a famous film, isn't there, where uh, it says choose life. Well, God's actually offering it. The question is, do we take it? Um, so the king in our psalm is referring to King David, probably. Um, and in verse 7, it talks about him trusting in the Lord. But what does he trust in? Is it God's angels? Is it the kind of like amazing things that he does, his mighty acts? Is it his ability to shake the earth to its foundations, to send rain like we've got outside, or hail or wind? And actually, that's not it. The trust that he has is in the unfailing love of the Most High. And um, the king chooses roles. Kings of the Old Testament were interesting, weren't they? They had to interesting. do lots of destroying and crushing <laughs> enemies, which wasn't very nice. And it's not very nice reading about it. But actually, it's God's role to protect us. Uh, Jonathan's going to tell you that. No, I'm not. You keep going. Oh, I'm trying to set up the I'm interactivity and like, on uh, the, in uh, the internet, love. But it's his power and his might, and the might and power of God is highlighted in some of these terrifying verses. You will capture all your enemies. Your strong right hand will seize, seize them. You will throw them. The Lord will consume them. You will wipe off, wipe out their descendants. Your arrows will aim at their heads. It easy to, I'm, yeah. I'm not finding it easy okay. to read today, Excellent. no. I'm having a properly good dyslexic day today. Um, so it's really, it is hard, it is a hard read. And it's God that will do these things, it says. And just a little note on this in verse 9. The Hebrew reads like this. You set them ablaze like a furnace when you appear. In his wrath the Lord will engulf them in fire and consume them, rather than you will throw them in a fiery furnace, which is another version. Um, this is terrifying. I, I find it terrifying when I read it. Um, but it actually tells us of an incredible truth. And it's something that uh, I think Jonathan heard one of the speakers at the Minister's Conference uh, talking about, which is that we can't go near God in our present state. Um, so you I think he was talking about his that. tattoos more than anything else at that particular <laughs> point, um, but saying that it had the Isaiah tattoo where... Um, as I was touched with the burning coal, so she was yeah. by him. Um, I don't know where we are now. Do I just do it? Why would you set light to something? Yeah, we can't go near to God in our present state, so why would he set light to something or someone? You know, several images come to mind. If we go too close to a fire, I don't know about bonfire night and uh, what you can remember about that, but I do remember these enormous bonfires that were always in, in the yeah. parks. And people would gather around these bonfires, I'm sure, particularly in health and safety times when they didn't exist, and you could just go wherever you wanted, really. You could toast your marshmallows on the top of it, really. Um, there was no health and safety, was there in the 70s? Um, and I just remember it being so hot, and particularly if there was a wind it blowing in your direction, covering you with ash, and just thinking, wow, that's really, really hot. And of course, it's sort of it's reminiscent, isn't it, of the fiery <laughs> furnace story, um, when uh, the three friends of Daniel um, are going to be thrown in the fiery furnace for disobeying the king, and uh, and indeed they are. And the fiery furnace is so strong. I remember this very distinctly from childhood. This that the strong men that throw them in are overcome by the flames. And it's that kind of vision of God, isn't it? That God is so holy, he's so amazing, that we can't go anywhere near him. That if we come near to God, then, you know, we're going to be overcome by his majesty and by his glory and by his fire. Well, in Exodus 3, verse 1 to 5, it says this. Now Moses was telling the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. And when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. 
At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The fire of God in this case was the sign of God's presence and his holiness. For those of you that know your Bible, um, I don't know whether you remember, but Jesus actually claimed to be several things uh, in John's account of his life. Um, and one of the claims is that I am the resurrection of the life, John eleven twenty five. I am the bread of life, John six thirty five. And there's several other claims there. The I am, this is not just I am this, that and the other. It's the I am. It means something. And it comes from this passage in Exodus. It comes from Exodus verse 14 where it says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. As a boy, I had no idea what that meant. But it means that God is referring to himself as the being, the person who's always been there, the Alpha and the Omega. And when Jesus says it, just like we were referring to the Son of Man and all the implications of that, the people would have immediately known what he actually meant. Uh, and to obviously claim to be God, um, to many of them, was complete blasphemy. Unless he was the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. So Yahweh is surrounded by fire, it's holy, literal holy ground, you can't just approach God. It's like trying to get in contact with the Queen or meet with the Prime Minister. You need to have an intermediary, you've got to have someone who can go and kind of make the broke of the, the arrangement, so to speak, and make sure that it can happen and you've done the right things and all the rest of it. Um, obviously, uh, we, we don't have that kind of power, do we, Jonathan, to do <laughs> Well, we don't know. I haven't tried to contact the Queen all the time. Maybe, maybe you could try. It didn't work. Know. It might mm -hmm. do. You never know. He used to be a priest, um, but Jesus replaced the priesthood at his death and instead made a way for us um, to God in himself, using his own blood as a perfect sacrifice to open up the way to the Father. We approach God not only because we are sprinkled, sorry, we approach God only because we are sprinkled with the blood of the Lamb if we believe in Jesus. What is unholy, which sadly is us, is made holy and blameless because of his unfailing love, another reference to our psalm. If we try and approach him without Jesus, then like Psalm 21 says, we would simply burn up, just like being in a furnace. So in Jesus, we can reside in God's presence and know his mighty power in our lives to really change things. We were talking about just inviting people into God's presence and the fact that we are the presence of God in other people's lives. That's incredible. We have this mighty power in us, the Holy Spirit, God himself living inside of you if you believe in Jesus, which means you have incredible power to not only just represent Jesus, but to actually be in other people's lives, to pray for them, to see God working in other people's lives. It's really quite amazing. And this presence battles with the evil inside of us and the evil around us as well. It brings lasting peace, true joy, and it changes people, transforms them. So when we give ourselves uh, to him and our troubles to him, we watch him battle for you and when you I was talking to Freya about this um, yesterday I think having similar conversations with her when you hand something over completely you don't hold back you give it you give it completely to him he will fight for you and he does go before you and it's incredible to watch and that thing that big thing that has been kind of crushing you because it's such a massive burden it becomes light because he takes that weight off his shoulders and goes, actually, mm. I'll, I'll deal with this. And then it's amazing. We've seen it in our own lives where there's been impossible situations where we thought, how are we ever going to get through this? <laughs> we really can't. And, and yet God does. And he opens up ways that you never expected and plans that you never thought existed. Um, and it is, it is amazing when you do do that. But I guess it's that big act of faith, isn't it, doing it in the first place. Got a few of those coming up, haven't we, as well? Um, <laughs> before we, we're going to end with a passage from Hebrews, which kind of hopefully ties everything together um, from the New Testament. 
Um, before I do, I'm just going to say that there should be a poll up in front of you. Yes, it's coming up. Um, to do with uh, songs. Please choose your favourite song. Um, I mean, some really obvious ones come to mind as we talk about strength and power. But there's four there for you to choose. So choose two, as in choose one and if somebody else chooses another. Um, and hopefully um, we'll have a couple of songs to be able to sing to you afterwards if we can get the results of the poll. <laughs> so, it's technology, isn't it? What, That's the let's problem. Let's read the passage and then we could get the results. I'll poll. read the first bit and then I'll look, at, look through the poll <laughs> the second bit. <laughs> You've got about 10 seconds to fill it in. Now, if you're, if you're seeing this later on and the poll is popping up, don't fill it in. <laughs> we can't the play poll, poll a song <laughs> if you're watching this at midnight, personally to you. We'd love to, of course. Um, and the Lord may make your heart sing, but we can't change the song. So don't get annoyed with this if you're filling the poll in and the song doesn't change. <laughs> this isn't a jukebox. Um, but the good thing is we don't have to talk about charging. No, you won't be true. charged no, for, for doing true. this. It's Isn't that wonderful? Anyway. Normally they have a whole list of, you will be charged at your standard network rate, etc, <laughs> etc. I'm going to shut up now. Should we read the passage? It's Hebrews 12, and it's from verse 18, and it's fab. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched, and it is burning with fire. To darkness, gloom, and storm. To a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further words be spoken to them, because they could not bear what was commanded. Even if an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. In verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. To the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Can you pray for us a little bit? <laughs> I still can't get the results of this. I can see that, that a couple of people have voted. Oh, that's uh, good. Well, actually, Kelly's given to me. Kelly, um, she hi. She said, Strength will rise and great are you, Lord. It's not telling us who's joining us today. And, on, somebody, on, else, on here. and somebody else voted for great are you, Lord. And so it's, it's, yeah, Facebook's been a bit weird. I think it's Fridays. I think it just I don't think it is. I think it's just Facebook. <laughs> But at least we're joining you. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? If we didn't have Facebook, what would we have done during the pandemic? It would have been pretty miserable, really, wouldn't it? So, I mean, we're doing these really weird Zoom calls at the moment where literally we're having, I think we had four different time zones on a Zoom call yesterday. Because that's what it, that's what it shows. Everybody has to kind of work it out. But, uh, yeah. Oh, okay, so there's some great things here. Yeah. God's power lives in us, enabling us to share his love and good news. Absolutely. So strength will you rise and great are you, Lord. Um, we'll do strength will you rise because I, I really wanted strength will rise. Great. And then we'll see about the second one. So if you haven't voted yet, please vote. And uh, yeah, we can't. I don't think we can see your name or anything. It's literally just the vote. So if you want to remain anonymous, it's fine. Just yeah, vote anyway. Don't know it's you. you don't know <laughs> it's you. you. It's an anonymous vote unless you <laughs> do what Kelly's done and actually put it in the chat. <laughs> Thanks, Cal. All right, here we go. This is strength will rise. Strength will rise. Thank you. 
are you Lord? Thank you. Thank you, Bridget, for singing along with us. That's so cool. Um, 
Wow, what a bunch of amazing people joining Absolutely. us this morning. We've got a very, wow. oh. very talented bunch of people as well. It's so lovely, but I just want to like, don't you just want to like, get them and hug people. everyone? I know, I know, <sighs> we do need to have a catch up. Actually, that's a point because a certain person is approaching a certain birthday at some point this year. I don't April. know who that is. And uh, although we won't be able to do the celebration, the big celebration in April, probably because of various other things going on, there will be a big celebration party that you'll be getting an invite to. Please come along. So, Especially yes, people with new husbands and stuff as well. Yes, we need to meet people. So, yeah, we've got to organise that, haven't we? Yeah, we have. We need to find a little bit of finance for that as well, don't we, really? <laughs> we were going to have it in the, the church big hall. party of the half century, yeah. We were going to have it in the church hall, so we've got two buildings in the church, but but um, somebody unfortunately dug up the floor to help with a survey we were having, and it means we can't use the building anymore. <laughs> so we've got to think of another way around it now. So <laughs> Until it's repaired, and that's going to take a while. So we're thinking of possibly hiring like the tower, aren't we? Yes. Is, yeah, um, so it's a lot more reasonable than thinking that's literally on our doorstep as well. That's but nice. uh, we're looking into that. Anyway. It's never yours tomorrow, Bridget. <gasps> no way! Oh, Bridget, I can't believe. I can't believe <sighs> it. And Kelly was, of course, here for my 40th. I'm pretty sure, Bridget, you're here for my 40th as well. Yeah. Alex, I think you missed out on that. Bridget, I remember Bridget being there. Various people being there. We had it here, your 40th. We did. Yes, because Julia stuck a for sale sign on my back. That's right, yeah. With one pound ninety nine or right. something. Just a pound. Oh, it was just, just a pound. It was just a pound. A little bit cheaper, you know. Inflation. <laughs> she I'm knows your of band. Inflation. <laughs> she knows my. I'm joking. I'm obviously joking. You're obviously joking. You're a anyway. bargain. Anyway. <laughs> we need to go. <laughs> It's just going to annoy people. <laughs> ah, anyway. So let me see. Guys, if you need us to pray for you, please let us know as well. There's and no 11 to the next week, is there? We are having... Uh, oh, no. <laughs> well, we'll definitely be praying for you and Mike. Bless you. Um, oh, that is really rubbish. Um, okay, we are um, having a week off next week. I'd say a week off. We're taking the kids away. I'm just still doing casting. You're not having parents. a week. No, it's not going to be a week off. <laughs> but we are having a week off from doing this stuff. Yeah, so we're really sorry um, we're not here so, to do this. Uh, and I think you'll get some time away from, from the normal day to day yeah. stuff. And uh, hopefully the kids will have a nice time just because it's having to do this in the class. Yeah, so. seeing your own parents. So we'll be back Monday week and um, be love to see you then. Um, all the various things are going on like normal. We are meeting at 10 30 on Sunday. Um, Rod speaking and I'll be banging the piano and playing lots of wrong notes and singing lots of things out of tune again. So if you'd like to see that, um, please come along as well and we'll be streaming that too. So let me see you all. I'm sorry Take for care. whispering on. See you later. Bye. Bye. -bye.